Hello and welcome to another episode of Tux Lives. This is the third and final installment, the epic conclusion to the G Trilogy. In episode one, we looked at Groff, the Unix text editing utility. In episode two, we investigated Grep, the Unix search utility. And in this, the final episode, we will look at how to put together a machine with no GUI. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial. I don't know enough to do a tutorial. And when I tried going through each step, uh, this thing would have been like over two hours long. So... <laughs> Not going to do that, not going to attempt that. I'm just going to rip through as I usually do and just give you the meat and the potatoes and the things that you need uh, to do what it is that I am doing. So as always, uh, this podcast is a journal. It is a journal of my journey, my journey into Linux. Uh, so I, I'm not a master. I'm just showing you what I'm learning. Uh, but this is the biggest video I will ever have done on Linux yet. Uh, it is just a big subject. I can barely cover everything you can do with this. So let's stop wasting time and let's get into it as soon <laughs> as I give you this little update. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, a few episodes ago in my Mytho Logos podcast, I was talking about my Omniad project and the massive archive uh, that I had to manage. And I have finally, at long last, I converted all these documents to text, plain text format. So they are visible uh, in the terminal. They're visible to grep and all of those things. And I can use them in Emacs. Uh, this turned out to be a real nightmare. <laughs> in brief, my ancient DOS uh, WordPerfect documents were the real culprits. And there were about uh, 25 of them that had to be converted manually. Even if I opened them in LibreOffice and saved them as plain text, the document would still be empty. So I had to cut and paste and remove formatting and save them as plain text files and finally they worked they're greppable they're emacable they are they are useful to me now and after i removed all the duplicates and all the documents that i wasn't going to need uh for the project although if i need them i'll come back and get them it turned out to be 300 documents so uh it, all of these together 300. But that's done, and I never want to do this again for as long as I live. And when I ported it over to the laptop where I'm prepping Omniad in Emacs, and I opened the first document in Emacs, it was such a feeling of relief and satisfaction. And uh, as I say, I, ne I never want to do this again for as long as I live. So... <clears throat> What we see here is my little HP streamer. I know it's a terrible photograph. I have a miserable camera on my phone and I don't care about phones and I never use it to take pictures. So it doesn't really matter to me, <clears throat> pardon me. But uh, I got a shot and uh, this is what I'm doing it on. And this has absolutely no desktop environment. It has no GUI. It has no graphics. It is nothing but command line. And uh, this is what I'm going to show you how to uh, put together in this episode. So that is what mine looks like. Um, I love this so much. I now want to get a full-size laptop for this with a real keyboard. Uh, it's a bit of a hassle uh, coming up with workarounds uh, for this uh, abridged chiclet keyboard. <laughs> I'd very much like to have a much nicer uh, keyboard and a larger screen to work with. So, where to, be to begin? What I'm using is Ubuntu Base. And I tried several things for this, and none of them worked. None of them were solutions. Uh, either the distros were too unusual to me and I 
uh, it was just too complicated or uh, they, they, they were literally server operating systems and I don't know anything about that. Uh, what I needed was something familiar and I thought I wonder if that version of Ubuntu that's in the Windows Linux subsystem, could I just get that? And you can, <laughs> and you can get it here, and you can get it in lots of different places. Um, this is not where I got it from. Uh, I could not find where I got it from. <laughs> I forget where I got it from. But you will find uh, sites like this where you can just download Ubuntu Base. And then it's just like any other install. You're going to make the uh, USB, burn it to the USB using whatever you use. I'm using Etcher now. Uh, but whatever you use, you make an installation medium and then you boot into it. And I chose the graphical installer uh, because I'm not ready for a command line install. And that was one of the problems previously was they all had, all the ones I tried had a command line install. And no matter how much research I'd do, I'd install it, I'd boot it up, and there'd be no Wi-Fi. I'd install it, I'd boot it up, there'd be a connection, but it wouldn't allow me to update my repositories, and I couldn't get any software on it. Uh, so I use the uh, graphical installer. It's basically the same as the Ubiquiti installer, except it's very low res. It looks like it's from 1985 or something. Uh, it's a little bit longer. It's slightly more involved, but not really. Um, and you will get certain questions. They were irrelevant to me. Uh, in some parts of the world, apparently, you need an HTTP address to access the internet. Um, it's going to ask you if you have a proxy server. Uh, that's about it that I remember. Uh, was that uh, otherwise it was like a slightly more uh longer winded and uh very primitive looking ubiqui ubiquity installer but it worked i finished i rebooted i was in i had wi-fi everything worked it's ubuntu i've been using ubuntu based distributions this is what i'm learning on and uh I was able to get started. <laughs> so let's get started. Here are my recommends. You, uh, you've installed it, you booted it, it works. I say the very first thing you want to do is you're going to get a list of updates and upgrades. And I would go ahead and do that right away. Update, upgrade, let it do that and get out of the way. Uh, the very next thing that I recommend you do, and let me just pause and say, everything in here, it's from a newbie's point of view. It's from a newcomer. I'm sure there are better ways to do all of this. And people will leave comments and tell me there are better ways to do all of this. There are easier and faster ways to do all of this. But this is how I learned it. And this is how I'm doing it. And maybe it will help you. But if you dig around, if you have more experience and you, you want to look around uh, at other solutions, I'm sure you can come up with different and often better solutions. But this is just my take on it. And I say the very first thing you want to do is install a multiplexer. I'm using GNU Screen, uh, but most people are using Tmux. Either way, uh, you're going to need a multiplexer. Now, you will have six terminals. You will have F1 through F6. And uh, sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes I use more than one tab. Uh, and sometimes I don't, but uh, you, you're going to want uh, a multiplexer to get started because you're going to be doing a lot of split screen. You're going to be looking at a lot of tutorials online. You're going to be reading man pages and info pages, and it's good to have them side by side. So the very first thing you want to do is install Tmux. You know, I, I'm assuming by now I'm talking to people who know. <laughs> 
pseudo apps install Dbox. Do I have to say it? Do I really have to say it? The uh, very next thing I think you should do is install a web browser. I'm using links to uh, that. It works for me. It's taken the place of all the others. Uh, but there's also links is terrific. Uh, my number two is e-links. Uh, to me, links to and e-links have the best look. They just come pre-formatted to look great in the terminal. And, uh, oh, and then there's also W3M, which, eh, I started with it and I wouldn't touch it now. Uh, very ugly and overly complicated. Uh, navigation's complicated, but maybe you'll love it. So maybe try all of them. And I recommend trying all of these things before you do the install. Try them on a laptop or whatever, but uh, try all these things uh, before you commit to the bit. Uh, but now you'll be set up. You can split the screen. You can create multiple screens and flip it like the pages of the book, or you can keep switching out uh, this screen or that screen. And uh, you'll have a web browser so you can look up information and you're gonna be looking things up. Trust me, when they don't work, you gotta look it up. And if the man in the info pages don't tell you, you gotta look it up. And, you know, it's inconvenient to put it aside and go on a, another laptop or whatever and go on the GUI web browser. No, you don't need it. You're only reading text anyway. So uh, you wanna do it right there, right where you are. Uh, next up, you want to install NeoFetch, of course, because um, you're going to need this information, actually. Uh, you're going to need uh, what your components are and all the other uh, details that are uh, necessary to solving problems that you will run into. So you want to go ahead and install NeoFetch. And uh, next, you're going to have to install Pulse Audio and also Mixer. Um, otherwise your uh, laptop is going to tell you there's no volume control. So you're going to have to manually install those, by which I mean sudo apt, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but yeah, get uh, Pulse Audio in there, and also Mixer, and then you'll be able to go into also Mixer, and you just want to go in, uh, let's see if I get this. You're going to want to go in and hit these with M, uh, hit these with zero rather to unmute them. So you're going to unmute them and then you will have volume control. So it's very simple. Pulse audio, also mixer, go in, tab from each to each, change MM to zero and voila, <laughs> you're going to have audio and you're going to, maybe you're going to use audio at some point. Okay, and then if you use Snap packages, this would be a good time to install Snapped and get it out of the way because maybe there's something you need that is a Snap package. Um, I'm kind of agnostic about snap Snaps. I've used them on a couple of occasions. I do have some issues w with some of it, uh, but uh, I do use them sometimes. It was the only way to get Emacs 27, for instance, was by having Snapped installed. And it's come up a few other times. Um, then, if you want to install Bash It or ZSH and Oh My ZSH, what's really neat is this shows up. Maybe you saw a little of it in the blurry photograph, but this shows up in TTY. So you can do a little bit of theming. It will show your Bash It theming it will show your uh, Oh My ZSH theming. And I think that's really cool to bring a little personality, to just bring a little uh, theming uh, to TTY, which is otherwise very bare. It's a very stripped back uh, environment. And you know, that's the whole point of this exercise. <laughs> but uh, after a while, you have so many graphics going on uh, diagnostic tools and inside text editors and in games and eventually you start n not really to feel that you're without graphics actually you're just without gooey graphics 
so that's getting started. Now let's move on to utilities. And this is really where this experience shines because we're basically hanging out in an administrator space. Uh, this is not really for uh, civilians anymore. Not many people are rocking the command line operating system. Uh, so most of what you'll find, I'm not even going to show you half of what's out there. I mean, they're just, there are endless utilities, but I'm just going to give you the things that you probably use in your GUI, uh, substitutes for that. And many of them are pre-installed. It's amazing how much is pre-installed in a Linux terminal. I mean, they really pack it to the gills. It's really where the action is. Uh, no one else has a terminal this packed out. No, no other terminal comes, uh, as fully equipped as a Linux terminal. Uh, so we've all heard of HTOP, but there's also just plain top, vanilla top. And uh, works fine. I have absolutely uh, no issues with this, and I do sometimes use it. It's a very small screen. So <laughs> sometimes I, I want something minimal. Uh, and then we all know HTOP, of course, the classic. Um, and then, of course, there's Bash Top. Bash Top will run in TTY, but slowly. Uh, I don't use it. What I did find that I flip and love is Glances. And you're going to have to install this yourself. Uh, but uh, I love Glances. In fact, Glances is kind of, kind of taking the place of my tops uh, just for observation of what's uh, going on. Uh, it, it looks great. It's well organized. It's a lot of information. And uh, yeah, I dig it. I, I say give glances a try. I've got all of these installed and I use them for different purposes. Uh, as far as disk usage goes, of course, we have DF is going to show us what's going on. But uh, a more sophisticated, which you will have, you check it might, if you use a different distro uh, for this, or if you are learning this in Arch or Manjaro or Fedora or, you know, something else, Debian is slightly different in some regards. Uh, it may already be installed. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but this is a far more uh, fully, richly featured disk usage and maintenance application. Uh, as you can see, it's just giving me everything. It doesn't take that long. Uh, and the next thing you know, you're up and running and it's almost finished. Uh, yeah, this is in depth. You can the, really get into this and uh, it, uh, it has other lots of features. I, I've hardly begun to learn how to use most of these utilities. Uh, so that is NCDU. And another utility is Enmon. And this is yet another. I meant to bump this up. I should have had this with the tops and glances. But Enmon is yet another uh, performance uh, piece. So this has more navig... You know, the, the whole menu here. There's more you can do inside here. Again, I've uh, hardly begun to explore everything that this program can do. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, it, it's very fully featured and you could probably uh, use this for a wide array of things. Again, I'm just using it to monitor, to peek, sometimes uh, to investigate why a process is slow or a process is giving me a problem. Uh, but you can do a hell of a lot more with these utilities. So that's... Uh, NCDU, N-M-O-N. If you're in the Ubuntu sphere, you will have to install these yourself. And yet another statistical tool <laughs> is Sayadar. And I don't know, did, is this from Wheel of Time? <laughs> did they get this from Wheel of Time? Or is it a, mis is it a, a uh, coincidence? Or... Uh, I don't know, but it's cool that it's called Sayadar. If you've read Wheel of Time, you know about the one power. But here we go. This is another one, and it will 
fill out and begin to give you tons and tons and tons of uh, information uh, that you need. So NCDU, NMON, <laughs> Sayadar, uh, add the C if you want to see it in color. And all of these, you can uh, create very long strings before you open it and get whatever information exactly it is that you want. And Mon, you can configure what you're going to see entirely before you press enter and open the program. Uh, but again, this is what uh, man pages are for. <laughs> Uh, so what else do we have here? Oh, and then there's dstat. This was already installed on my Debian uh, laptop, but I had to install it in here. And yet another uh, similar utility uh, that's going to give you a lot of visibility of your system. And, uh, you know, if you're really going to try and, like, do code and edit configs and... Uh, you know, really get into it and see what you can do uh, in, to and with a system like this, you're probably going to use all of these, all of these utilities. But uh, if you let this go, it becomes like Mandelbrot set complicated. Uh, I've let this go for long periods and uh, watched it develop. And it does become very revealing. And there are a couple instances where uh, I was looking for a, a bug and I ended up just by leaving this going, I was able to figure out uh, what the problem was. So this is actually quite a powerful uh, application and you can extend this quite a bit. And uh, you can extend this to the point where it's filling the entire screen and uh, it's giving you lots of different information. So that's one uh, that I never heard of before I started this gui list odyssey, but that's dstat. If you're curious, um, if you, you may or may not have this installed. I, I believe in, in Ubuntu, uh, they are, it comes installed with LS sensors and that allows you to just do sensors and get your temps. Uh, but you may have to install LS sensors in order to do that. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to need a file manager. There's good old Ranger, which I do still use sometimes. Uh, but I'm switching over to Midnight Commander. And uh, it's a shame I only got into this now because Emacs is taking the place of the things I was starting to use Midnight Commander for. You can use Midnight Commander for almost anything. It is a huge program. I started to use it as a uh, text editor to write in. Um, and then you can open a terminal and you can do most of the things uh, on a basic level that you do in Emacs. So it's a little bit redundant now, but um, I still pull it up sometimes and, and use it. Uh, as a file manager, I'm going to use it. If I'm outside of Emacs, I'm going to use it in favor of Ranger now. And uh, it, you know, it looks almost this good in TTY. It's a beautiful looking program. Let's get out of here. Uh, so yeah, Ranger or Midnight Commander, you can install those. There are many others. These are the two that I have used. Uh, say you wanna check out the weather. Well, you'll have to install curl in Ubuntu. In other distributions, it's already installed. But you're just going to do this, and you're going to get your local weather. It's going to pull it from your IP and show it. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly where I am, so let's just pretend we're in New York. And let's get the weather. Simple. Uh, I like this. Now, you can t turn uh, Celsius uh, to Fahrenheit. Um, the, the problem is it doesn't work in ZSH for some reason, and I'm so new to ZSH, I don't know why that is. But I'm going to show you uh, how to fix this. In Bash, you add a question mark <clears throat> and a lowercase u to the location, and it will show you in Fahrenheit instead of in Celsius. So that's simply, let's just do that again curl wttr.in. Now I changed this to my weather 
and you'll have to look up how to do that. Uh, I got the uh, script from somewhere, and now I don't remember where I got it from. All I know is I did it on all my machines, and it works. <laughs> so I just type in my weather and add my extensions to that. But that's built in. That's just waiting for you. Uh, so let's get to uh, calculators. You never know when you're going to need a good calculator. There are many calculators out there for terminal. <clears throat> Emacs has two very good calculators that I believe are the two calculators I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, and uh, I'm actually uh, using Q Calculate now. Um, and it has a uh, terminal version of that that you can pull up. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm so sorry. I have a fog in my throat. Let me take a drink of water. Uh a million apologies. But uh, Calculate with a Q has a very powerful terminal version. But what I discovered are the original Unix calculators. And these are fantastic. And I don't know who wrote them. By the way, I have to correct myself. In the last video, I said uh, I thought maybe Brian Kernighan wrote grep. He didn't. It was Ken Thompson who wrote the grep program. And I don't know who wrote... Uh, DC desktop calculator but this person deserves some credit because this was about three years before the HP 35 the original electronic pocket calculator and something that is said to have kicked off the microcomputer revolution and actually Steve Wozniak was working on the HP 35 when he quit and uh, went off with Steve Jobs to uh, form Apple but um this is before that, and it's essentially the same thing. And I don't know if this person has ever gotten credit, but uh, what I, I'll show you, the, the other one is basic calculator. So basic calculator, you want to do, yay, okay. <laughs> so, it's your basic calculator. Desktop calculator is a fully featured scientific calculator. And the man pages on this are actually quite extensive. Um, I've always had a problem with math my whole life. And I always said, I can't do math. I can't do math. Playing around with this, I had to figure out what I was doing wrong. And I discovered RPN, reverse Polish notation, and stacks. And ever since then, I've been learning math, finally. It's crazy because I excel at literature and the English language and things like anthropology and natural history and biology. Very good at that. Math, I just could never learn it. And now I know why. They should have taught it to me this way. This is how they should have taught it to me. And I actually picked up. Uh, the HP 35, the new, the latest edition, and another scientific calculator because I was trying to re, uh, to learn math the way I would in a classroom. And of course it wasn't working. Uh, but of course, on both of those calculators, they will do uh, reverse Polish notation and, and stacks. And putting all these things together, I'm finally making some math progress. So the way this works is you do 50, you do 50, you do plus, you say print, and you get your answer. Uh, but this will do the whole um, shebang with floating decimal point. And you can actually do like algebra and calculus and all of these things inside this calculator. Uh, it is really powerful and something I'm very glad that I found. And this has kind of become my calculator now. I mean, I have a desktop calculator, I have a pocket calculator, I have a couple scientific calculators, I have some calculator applications. I'm calculator dependent uh, in the same way someone who maybe was illiterate might be uh, dependent on uh, a pronunciation book or something or a, a vocabulary book or something. Um, <clears throat> But uh, yeah, I'm loving this. I highly recommend it. And those are pre-installed. So you already have them in there. 
And if you don't know about them, if you're into math, if you're someone who uh, has fun with math and it's one of your hobbies, uh, you need to check those out. Those are very cool, especially DC. Uh, it's very fully featured. And as far as I know, it has to be the first actual digital calculator. Calculator that uses a computer memory. I can't. I don't know of anything earlier. If you do, leave a comment before below. And never underestimate your man pages and your info pages. Uh, they are there for a reason. They are a utility. And now I'm spending so much time studying these things and going back and back and uh, learning my way. Uh, they are an invaluable resource. What other operating system not only comes with so many incredible programs baked into the cake, but also comes with hundreds of pages of useful manual instructions. I can't think of any. So those are utilities. Ah, excuse me. Now let's talk productivity. Every desktop has a productivity suite. Of course, you know you have V. You know you have Vim. You know you have Nano. That's the tip of the iceberg. You can go with Joe. You can go with Word Grinder. Or you could convert <laughs> and go with Emacs, which is how I've gone. And uh, at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to use org mode in TTY for you Emacs users. If you've never tried it before, it is possible. It is easy. It's just not self-explanatory. Uh, but yeah, the... Just these alone is more text editing and word processing power than you possibly need. Just Vim inside of a terminal with a terminal multiplexer, if you know a little uh, formatting, you're there. Um, maybe you want to use Word Grinder for something simpler. Joe is simpler. Nano's a little simpler. But uh, yeah, you've got three out of the box. And uh, there are many others that you can load. Uh, this is the tip of the iceberg. There are more text editors <laughs> than I even know of in the Linux, Unix, GNU world. Uh, I found a program called Dict, and it is a desktop dictionary. It doesn't pull it from the internet. And uh, say so we want to look up <laughs> Dic <laughs> dictionary in Dict, and this I had to install. And we get a very long res uh, response. Now, depending on your laptop, uh, your, your hardware, uh, how it does uh, TTY, you may not be able to scroll back up. <laughs> so there is a solution uh, to this. You just repeat the command and <laughs> make sure I got that right and you pipe it into a document. Bada bing, bada bang. <laughs> Solved. <laughs> so you can use the dictionary and if you get, if it gets a little too long, now you can abbreviate. I always go for the full Monty uh, because I I'm in love with words and language, uh, but you can narrow it down uh, before you hit enter. So that's dict. Uh, a dictionary application. Uh, here's something that's I'm so glad I found. I mean, this is going to be a major part, actually, of Omniad, is a project called WordNet. This is an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, project uh, based in Princeton University, where they are attempting to track the uh, usage of every word and the history of usage of every word in the English language from multiple complex vectors. This is beyond an etymological dictionary. It's beyond a dictionary. It's way beyond a thesaurus. Uh, this is just one of, this is extraordinary. I have this in GUI and I, I have this in terminal. So you install sudo apt install word net, then you type wn now, you can really uh, modify this. There are a lot of commands that you can add to, to this, this line. But I'm just going to ask for an overview. And I want to see if there are any compound words. 
And let's just say we're going to look for the word root. Yeah, <laughs> this is... Uh, in the GUI, it's really interesting because it shows it in trees, branching trees of relation. Uh, this doesn't even begin what it can show you. Um, the database that you, it's localized. You download it and you can uh, upgrade it. Um, it's, uh, it's actually on your machine. Uh, it, it is just extraordinary. And of course, you can do the same exact thing that I did before. <laughs> Bada bing, bada bang. <laughs> so you can also save those outputs. And that's very useful to me because I am saving the outputs. Um, without getting all into Omniad stuff, there is a uh, theoretical uh, vocabulary, vocabulary of words that are so old they must be uh, the roots of the Proto-Indo-European language. Um, and those are the oldest words that we know of that we have. And I've been like mapping them out very sloppily for years. And now I'm able to get organized there. So that is word net. And yeah, phenomenal. If you're into language, you need to look up this project. You need to download the uh, program and you need to get into this. Then of course there's Pandoc. I'm so excited about Pandoc. But I'm just dogpiling everything. I mean, I, I really am taking on a lot all at once. And I haven't made the progress in Pandoc that I want to make. But the thing is, um, you can convert documents. Um, I've tried a few things. They worked. But I'm not about to attempt a d demonstration here. Because I'm really not that... Uh, as they used to say in the old century, in the quaint old slang, I'm not that fat on Pandoc to attempt a live exhibition. Uh, the bottom line is you can download things, as I'll get next uh, in the next section. You can download things uh, from TTY. It depends on the website. Some will not allow it. They really require you to click a button with a mouse. Some do allow you. Um, so you can download PDFs and convert them uh, into plain text or some other uh, format that you can view inside of a text editor. So there, that's that. Uh, if you're already using Pandoc, then you're in luck. Uh, amazingly, LaTeX comes pre-installed on Linux systems. If you know LaTeX, uh, you could just do a document in Groff and LaTeX. It's already there. You don't even need anything additional. And then you can open it in uh, Nano or Vim to edit. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to get to uh, LaTeX soon. Uh, I, I, I'm finally making some, some real progress there. But I, I kind of got wrapped up in Emacs and Unix utilities. <sighs> then, of course, you got your calendar. You want your month. You want your year. That's pre-installed. Uh, clock, I use TTY clock. You'll have to install that. Uh, you can change this to the uh, 12 hour clock. <laughs> you can add seconds. You can center and you can quit the program. Uh, so yeah, you can install TTY clock. Uh, calendar's already there. Then there's a program called Cal. And Cal is a planner. It's like a day, week, or, or work, or it's a planner. And uh, this might be a substitute for uh, outline or org mode in Emacs for you. And uh, I installed this. I played around with it. We're going back to March here. I never, I never picked it up again. Uh, but it's there if you want a day planner. Um, so let's get rid of that stuff. So let's finally get to media and entertainment. Uh, we already installed audio. So you have lots of uh, options here. You've got uh, CMUS. 
or CMUs, I don't know. And as you can see, the last time I used CMUs, I was listening to the early music concert, which I love. I highly recommend uh, the early music concert uh, if you're into uh, Renaissance music. But uh, great program. It's taken the place of MPV and VLC for me. I don't need them. I use this. I use it on everything. I use it from Emacs to play music. Uh, and then there are programs like MOC, MP3 Blaster, and others. So you can uh, load uh, things to uh, uh, onto your system from a USB, or you can uh, use Curse Radio. There are other radio tuners for the terminal. But I'm using Curse Radio. And again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I actually do use this. So you have those options. Uh, these are all things you'll have to install. CMUSE or MOC or MP3 Blaster. Uh, Curse Radio is going to be a bit of a chore. Uh, you're going to have to type out a rather long chain <laughs> to get that uh Get that installed, but uh, I covered that in a previous video, so I'm not going to show you again here. But yeah, there you go. You can uh, listen to music, and there is free music. There's free classical music. There's old 78 records. Uh, there's folk music. Um, there's music you can download uh, from TTY and listen to uh, from the command line. So... Uh, that's music, and uh, then uh, there's also reading. So I found a couple of things. Um, one is you can surf the web and bookmark sites that have literature and things you want to read up there, articles, blogs, books, all the classics of literature are out there. From the Epic of Gilgamesh <laughs> uh, all the way up to more recent books that are legally available online. Uh, to be read. Um, so yeah, there's uh, plenty to read online and sometimes you can download. Uh, I've been downloading from the Folger Shakespeare website. They have all the plays up. They have them up in plain text and you can download them uh, from TTY. Um, and what's interesting is uh, Vim has a read-only mode. So I thought it was kind of, you know, it's uh, when you're reading text in a text editor, you're going to inevitably do something that moves the text around. You're going to move the cursor. You're going to hit enter because you're used to doing that in the GUI or the, the arrow down or something. But uh, actually, you can do this with Vim, and it's like having a, tech, a plain text ebook reader, <laughs> which is really neat. Uh, so yeah, you could, uh, as I did, I downloaded the Iliad, the Odyssey, and a couple other things, and I'm just using this as my ebook reader in TTY, and I think that's pretty wicked, and it's as uh, simple as that. Uh, getting out of here is as simple as that. <laughs> uh, how do I get out of here? You know what? I don't know. And I don't care. <laughs> I'm leaving that in there. I don't know what happened, but uh, but uh, I'm not gonna fix it. Now I promise this. Um, you know I don't use Vim, so I forgot how to exit from it. <laughs> but let's just ignore that gap. Okay, using org mode in Emacs. So say uh, you want to get some creative writing done. Uh, this is your hobby. This is entertainment for you. And uh, you want to use org mode. Now, I was trying to use the, uh, the um, default key bindings. And they weren't working. And I'm looking at the screen and I'm thinking, I know it's right here in front of me. What am I missing? Because sometimes, you know, we're all stupid. It may be FN first on a laptop to to get the functionality of the F keys, but uh, it's F10 for the menu. <laughs> hey, 
and you just go over here and it gives you the key bindings that it uses in terminal and they're easy and they work and you can totally do org mode and outline mode and everything that those things do in TTY. And I just think that's really, really cool. Uh, so last but not least, <laughs> we have games. And I actually skipped some stuff. Actually, I'm going to show you this because I'm not the only Bible reader out there. There are other Bible readers. You can download the King James Bible for the, the command line. <laughs> and I am a great Bible reader. I think it's just one of the most extraordinary, important, and untouchably great works of literature uh, that the world has ever known. And I get great pleasure uh, out of reading it. So you can do this and... Uh, and get Genesis 1.1. So you're going to sudo apt install bible-kjv and then you're just going to write bible, right? And you could just go through the whole bible. But if you if you know what you're looking for, you know, you can uh Let's see. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh you can pull up a book that you want. So you've got to be familiar with the Bible. You got to know what the standard uh, format for uh, abbreviating the names are. But it's quite nice. It's the freaking King James Bible, right? <laughs> right in the command line. Uh, so yeah, that's something else you can read. But this is me. I I do read, uh, you know, Shakespeare and the Bible for pleasure because I'm a book guy and I love literature. So last but not least is games. And you have the classics, like you can install an invaders, is Space Invaders, <laughs> and uh, I waste a lot of time playing this game. And then there's Moon Buggy. Is a silly little game. Uh, I think it's based on something that was called Moon Rover. And, uh, you know, it's just this <laughs> time wasting uh, garbage. <laughs> so. <laughs> and uh, then you have, uh, you know, Tetris is known as Bastet. And I didn't install it in here, but it, it, you can do sudo apt install Bastet and you'll get Tetris. There's a hundred Tetris clones. There's Pac Man for console, which is. ASCII, Pac-Man. So these are your classic arcade type games that you're going to play. Uh, then when you get past that, you have cool things like I'm really into Zang Band is based on the old uh, 1980 uh, DOS text slash map uh, RPG Rogue. It's a spin on Rogue, and I've gotten very into it. I'm, I've been playing it for a while. I'm way deep into the, the story. Um, I only do it in small increments. Uh, I, I bet you could probably rip through it in under an hour if you wanted. But um, it took me a while to figure it out. And now I'm in, enjoying playing Zang Band. Um, and, uh, oh, and then there's things like uh, Tic-Tac-Toe. I forget if I installed this in here, Tic-Tac-Toe. But uh, these are like classic little time-wasting games, arcade games, pen and pencil games. There are many chess games, but you have to know the pieces on the board. You've really got to know uh, real chess in order to play chess in the terminal because it's, you're only going to be doing uh, positions. There's no graphics. Uh, I've not been able to find uh, like an ASCII <laughs> chess <laughs> graphical game, only a command line. Now, I recommend you uh, download BSD Games. It's a whole package, and it turned out to be quite extensive. There's quite a lot in it, uh, including, there's a game that's also included on Emacs that Emacs calls Adventure. And uh, it, it's basically a ripoff of Zork, except in here, it's a game called Colossal Cave, which I had downloaded separately, and it's a very cool uh, text only game. I think it's way better than Zork. Uh, but they just call they also just call it adventure. 
so I'm not sure what the legalities are of that or, or what the licensing is. But uh, what I loved that I got out of BS, why I downloaded BSD games, uh, was to get Hangman, <laughs> which I absolutely love. You know, I always start with the, the vowels and then, you know, oh, look, I got one. Uh, R, you usually, go, you usually get an S or a T or a J, very popular. L, C, K. So, uh, anyway, uh, that is that. I play endless games of Hangman. It's actually one of my favorite games. Now, if you do BS games non-free, you're going to get rogue. It's the original uh, DOS game, Rogue. Uh, and uh, I, I haven't gotten up to that yet. I experimented with it a little. It looks cool. Uh, I downloaded, you know, I installed BSD games non-free specifically to get Rogue. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much uh, your basic suite of games, you know. You have your classic arcade games, uh, Ninvaders, the Space Invaders, uh, Bastetus Tetris, uh, Pac-Man for consoles, Pac-Man. You have early platform type games like Zang Band, Colossal Cave, and Rogue. And uh, that's the tip of the iceberg. There's actually a whole lot more uh, that you can do in terms of terminal gaming. Uh, I haven't even gotten into it. I think there is uh, quite a few other things that are out there. You could just make your own game. Uh, and I, I don't play cards. I believe there are card games that you can play in Terminal. And yeah, right in TTY, you have uh, all the utilities you could possibly want. There's, you could put together a whole productivity suite that works. If you're doing text-based work, you could conceivably do it this way if you know how to format uh, in a text editor. There's nothing that's stopping you from doing that. You can listen to music, browse the web, you can read books, you can uh, play games. Uh, it's everything that you could possibly want uh, all in one package. So, wow, this went on for too long. I'm going to wrap this up. So, I hope that was interesting and entertaining. If you enjoy my uh, watching my Linux journey unfold, uh, think about subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications, giving me a thumbs up like uh, to help the algorithm, and leaving a comment so I know what you think, and I know that you're there, and I know what you like and what you want, and I can try to do some things for you people out there. So that is the end, Ugh, the end of the G trilogy, and I'll be back soon with more content, more Mytho logos, more Tux lives, and thank you for listening. Until next time, good luck to you.